So I just want to give kind of an overview of where we are right now. We are, we've pretty much finished up chapter 23. Okay, so everything that you need to know about Faraday's Law, we've talked about in order to do the, the homeworks that are due on Friday and on Monday. Uh, there are uh, some things in the chapter 20, chapter 23 which we're not going to talk about too much. Um, if you are in electrical engineering, I recommend that you actually read section 23.6 on inductance, which is basically just using Faraday's law in sort of circuit applications and looking at how if you have uh, changing, cur changing currents in a circuit, then because currents make magnetic field, you're going to have a changing magnetic field, which then creates changing electric fields and how that affects uh, circuit analysis. And so that's a useful thing to look at if you're going to be going into any applications involving circuit design or uh, various other electronic applications. So, so you, you might want to read through that. Uh, there's another discussion on energy in electric and magnetic fields. We'll, we'll come back to that in the next chapter, so we will say something about that a little bit later. And then there's an optional section in the end on, uh, on basically alternating current circuits and RL circuits, circuits where you have resistance and this quantity called inductance in a circuit. So if you're, again, if you're interested, you can read through that. But basically, we are done with Chapter 23. So we're going to start something new today, Chapter 24. And 24 is kind of the climax or kind of the highlight of, of this entire sequence, this entire course. And I want to just remind you of something that if you were here on the very first day of class, I think we did this on the very first day of class, you may have seen, but I'll just show it to you again. We have this device here which if I plug into a wall outlet, and I have here just a light bulb connected to two copper wires okay, by alligator clips. Okay, so there's, it's really just a light bulb and two bare wires. And if I bring it near this device, the light bulb lights up. And I bring it away, and it goes out, and I can bring it near and turn it like that, it goes out. And I turn it that way, it comes back on. And if I bring it over here, it goes out, or at least it gets dim. It goes out when if I do that. Bring it over here, it comes back. Here. Now, it's a little bit, it's dimmer at least. Okay, and then bring it over here, it's brighter. And so we showed this on the very first day of class as just kind of a teaser, and we said that it would take the entire semester to build up what we need in order to explain the, what's going on here in explicit detail. And we're finally getting to the point where we can do that. And we're going to start talking about today, well, hopefully we'll get there, but the, the basic idea of Chapter 24, it's on radiation, electromagnetic radiation. And I want to start the discussion by, again, just summing up where we've been. We've past couple weeks here, we've looked at patterns of electric and magnetic fields in space, and we saw some new equations, kind of fundamental relationships, which, which uh, relate fields to geometry, basically, and, and, charge and charge and current. So we saw Gauss's law. which says that the pattern of electric field over a volume, which we can calculate using this quantity called flux, E dot n hat dA over a closed surface, is related to the charge inside. So it's equal to Q inside divided by a constant. We saw Gauss's law for magnetism. which says that the magnetic flux over a closed surface is 
was equal to zero. Okay, so there's no magnetic monopoles, this is telling us. We saw Ampere's law. which says that the magnetic field pattern over a closed loop, so if we're integrating not over an area but over a loop, this path integral of the magnetic field tells us about the current that's passing through that loop, so the, en the enclosed current. And then finally we saw Faraday's law, which tells us about the pattern of electric field over a closed loop, namely this curly electric field, non-coulomb electric field. If you integrate that over a closed loop, that is associated with a changing magnetic flux through that loop. So the time, negative time derivative of B dot N hat dA. Okay? These four equations are called Maxwell's equations. And so they were discovered independently, but James Clark Maxwell at the, in the late 1800s was the first person to kind of encapsulate them all, put them all together, and to realize that these four equations, along with the electric and uh, magnetic force laws. So if you have these and the electric force equal to Q times E, magnetic force is equal to QV cross B. They basically encapsulate everything we know about classical, non-quantum, but classical electric, uh, electric and magnetic fields. Okay, So entire, all of electricity and magnetism is summed up in these equations. We could have writ written them on the board the first day and be done said, okay, we're done, uh, except that it requires a lot to understand what they mean and to apply them to various situations. 